morning, everybody. Welcome to everyone who's watching by the internet. It is Mother's Day. Just want to acknowledge all of our moms today. Tell you happy Mother's Day again. Can we put our hands together, fellas, for all of the mothers in the room? Come on. Can we do that this morning? You better be clapping, fellas. <laughs> you better be clapping. You know, I have a mom. Just to let you guys know, I have a mom. And you know, every year at Mother's Day, it's like, what do you, what do you get your mom for Mother's Day? You kind of go through that gift thing. So I got online and was looking up, you know, gifts for mom. And what are, what are moms asking for? And the best one I heard was this mom said, you know what I want for Mother's Day? I just want you to get me one simple thing. She said, I want you to take the kids. And she said, I want you to put them in the car. And she said, I want you to get in the car and I want you to drive to Florida and then I want you to turn around and then just drive back home. That's what I want for Mother's Day. So basically, I want you gone all day long. Just drive and go and then come back when I'm in the bed. That's what I want for Mother's Day. So moms, some of you can go home, pack a lunch, put gas in the car, and just tell them, have a great day. We'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow. Whatever you want for Mother's Day. I hope it's an incredible day. But hey, we're starting a series today. We're real excited about it. We're calling So Help Me God. And uh, what we're talking about is anything you want to talk about. And we uh, asked you last week to start writing down some ideas on your Connect cards of some things that you would like for us to talk about. So all month long, this is really your series. You get to determine the topics that we're discussing. And really it is, God help us. These are areas of our life that we want to know. So God, just help us in these topics or these areas. And so maybe you've been thinking about it this week and you thought, oh man, I didn't write that down. I wish I had written that down. Take your connect card today throughout the experience. Maybe if something pops in your mind, write it on that connect card. Say, hey guys, I want to, I want us to talk about this, right? I wish you would cover this. And there've been lots of topics that you turned in last week that we were able to kind of combine into one big idea or thought today. And so today we're going to be focusing on on temptation. And I know most of you in here, you don't deal with temptation of any sort. I know you are, are super Christian, holy people, you know, you don't, you don't struggle with anything in here. I can see it on your faces, right? Most of you are looking like, no, you don't know me very well, okay? We all have a temptation. There is something in all of our lives that, that come and try to drag us from being who God wants us to be and accomplishing things God wants us to accomplish. There's not one person in this room that doesn't struggle with temptation. Let me go ahead and let you off the hook because some of you, since we said we're going to talk about temptation, you got, you got a little tense. You kind of you set up a little straighter. You know, you tried to look a little bit more Christ-like. If you can do that in your seat here, some of you started combing your hair or whatever you had to do to clean it up. Every person in here struggles with temptation. Temptation is not a sin. Understand this. Temptation is not a sin. Giving in to temptation and walking in temptation is a sin. So every person in this room, we carry the devil. The enemy wants us to have this sort of guilt and feeling about walking with temptation in our life. But every person is tempted, not all the same, but every person walks through some sort of temptation. So it is not a sin to be tempted. But I want to give you a verse of scripture. I put it on your outline for today's message, Matthew 6 and 13. And it says this, it's just a prayer. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. That should be a prayer that we all pray every day. God, today, as soon as my feet hit the floor, lead me not into temptation. Let me overcome whatever it is. Some of you, the moment you wake up, you have to, you have to feel like you just have to repent over the dream that you had. You just let somebody have it in your dream. It was so real. You told your boss what you thought. You know, you just let it go and you woke up and thought, oh, oh God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, have I shouldn't have dreamed that. I wasn't in control, but I shouldn't have done that. And then your mind starts racing. And all this is before you even get out of the bed in the morning. You know how some of those days just are. Temptation will come when you least expect it from some of the most least expected places. I'll never forget one year being on vacation with Brandon and Danielle. And uh, we were in a, uh, an arcade one year. And, you know, uh, most of the arcades, they've got, you know, I mean, anything you want inside of a nice arcade, they've got it all. Well, this just arcade so happened to have one of those quarter machines. In it. You know what I'm talking about? Where the quarters are sitting right on the edge. And you just know that it just takes one more quarter. If I just put one quarter in there, all of that stuff is going to fall. Well, we got into this quarter machine, and uh, so we're playing. The, we were going in there to play video games, <laughs> but we caught that quarter machine and thought, okay, here's paying for the vacation. This is going to pay to plant the church. I mean, you know, all this great stuff. God, will give it to you. Let the quarters fall, you know? <laughs> So it's just, you know, you shoot that quarter in there, and then you watch it. 
And that little tray's going. If you've never seen one, it's a little machine. It looks like an old jukebox with the, with the glass exposed on the inside. And it's full of quarters. And it has a high level with this little roller that pushes a quarter off to all of these that are stacked on the edge. And it looks like they're all just ready to fall. But what they know and, and we don't, some of us still know and do it anyway, is that they're going to just keep pushing the quarters into a stack and maybe one or two falls every now and again. Well, we put all of our, you know, arcade money in this machine. But Danielle, of all people, you thought I was going with the DOS on this one. You really thought this was DOS. But no, this is Danielle. She says, I can't believe those quarters didn't fall. And all of a sudden, out of this frustration, she just bumps this machine like this right here. And, you know, it's got a sign on it that says, do not bump machine, alarm will sound. The reason the alarm will sound is because it's illegal to steal the quarters out of the machine, and that's why. But she didn't, she didn't think about it. She just bumps the machine. Quarters start falling. It sounds like we're in Las Vegas is what I would imagine. All you hear is she's freaking out. She's like, yes. And I'm thinking, well, this is probably not how we're supposed to win. Brandon Doss, on the other hand, he is absolute. I'm telling. I'm telling. Don't touch those quarters. I mean, he is pacing the floor. Don't touch a quarter, Daniel. Don't take one quarter out of that machine. And he's looking for someone who works there. And I'm like, you know, just calm down. It's going to be okay. He's like, we're going to jail. We're all going to jail. He is as serious as he can be to. He is scared to death over this quarter machine in the arcade. But in just a moment, without thinking, even though the sign was right in front, do not bump machine. Don't do it. Put quarters in, but don't shake the machine. It's wrong. It didn't matter. Even with the sign, the temptation was greater. And with every quarter that went into the machine, the, the anticipation was just building until Danielle just said, I'm going to get a quarter out here one way or another. <laughs> and the truth is, many of us are that way. We see the sign right in front of us. It's pointing in our face saying, don't do it. Don't go there. Don't say it. Don't, don't take this action. You're going the wrong way. But instead, we still decide just to shake the machine anyway because we want the quarters to fall. I heard this quote that says, lead me not into, tem into temptation. I can find it all by myself. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to lead me. I can find it on my own. And every person in this room, we're all that way. We can find ourselves in a place that we never thought we would go, doing things we never thought we would do, and with people we never thought we would be hanging out with. That's what temptation does in our life. And this morning, that's what I want to talk about. You chose the topic, so we're going to talk about how to overcome, how to deal with the temptation in our life. So let's pray, ask God's blessing over his word today. God, we love you. We pray today, God, that you would speak to us. We need you, God. This is an area where every one of us, God, we struggle with temptation, every person. And so, God, we just ask that you would just speak to us today, God, and that you would just reveal the areas of our life that we need you the most. God, the weakest areas, the weakest moments, the weakest uh, opportunities, God, that we would, God, we would just choose to do something that's not your best for us. And God, we want to be able to overcome it. We want to be able to navigate the temptations of life. So speak to us today, God. Help us, God. We, want to, we just want to be better for you. So open our ears to hear, God, our mind to understand, and our heart to retain. God, as you speak your word to us today, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've got your outline, I, I want to give you three things about being tempted that I want you to write down this morning. These are three things that I think are relevant to each and every one of us that I want us to kind of take inventory of this morning. It's three questions that I want you to ask yourself, and this will help us identify where we are personally in areas of temptation. It's one thing to talk about just temptation. It's a big subject. It's a very broad subject. It's different for every person. So I want to get personal with, with ourselves, and I want us to ask ourselves these three questions. Number one, ask yourself this, what tempts me? What tempts me? And when you start to think about it, when you ask yourself that question, many of you automatically, you thought of something Something came through your mind that was a temptation that you struggle with. The Bible says this, if we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living the truth. So the Bible puts it very plainly and, and, and very upfront. Anyone who says you don't struggle with something or you don't have sin in your life, well, you're just not speaking the truth because there's not a person who doesn't. 
So we understand that every person deals with something. Everyone struggles with something. Regardless of how much time you spend uh, doing anything for God, temptations will always be there. It will always stare you in the face. So the question is not if I'm tempted. The question is how are you tempted? What is it in your life that tempts you? And, you know, there were some studies done that I read about and, and looked at different areas of temptation and different patterns of temptation. And you know what they found? That men and women both are tempted typically for the most part over the same things. And when men and women are both asked questions about areas of temptation in their life, most of them would answer the same, that their areas of temptation were were sort of normal. But as studies have been done asking people about temptation, it's very interesting what people will say are their number one temptations. And I, they did this study in 2013, and I want to give you the number one answer that people said that they were most tempted by. This is men and women. When they're asked, what is your greatest temptation, 55% of people, this was the number one answer, said, I'm tempted by eating too much. Any Golden Corral lovers in here? <laughs> Listen, when we go to Golden Corral, we don't eat all day. Because we know we're going to eat all day's worth of food at the corral, okay? That's me. I love to eat. But most people say, you know what, I eat too much. And that's true for most every person. We all eat the wrong stuff at the wrong time. We like to eat. We just like, we, you know, they say church people, we've got all these things that we shouldn't do, so we just eat. <laughs> never mind gluttony being a sin, but never mind that. We'll move on. Check this out. 44% of people said this, they're tempted by spending too much money. It's a big temptation. Most people spend more than they have, okay? Most people are trying to catch up and pay every month what they spent last month. We already spend more than we make. It is a big temptation in our life. But I want you to notice how this is going. Eating too much, spending too much money. 26% said gossiping is a big temptation. That's not true at all, is it? 24% of people said feeling jealous, jealousy, feelings, emotions can be a temptation. 18%, we're moving down the list now, 18% of people said viewing pornography is a temptation for them. This is one of the areas of difference for men and women. This is one of the few areas where they really differed in their responses. Most men said that they struggled with uh, pornography and the temptation of pornography um, it was only like 8% of women who actually said that they dealt with temptation of pornography. 12% uh, of people said lying or cheating. I'm not really tempted to lie. We don't have many liars in the world. We don't lie that much. Only 11% of people said abusing alcohol or drugs. And then only 9% of people said doing something sexually inappropriate. So in this big list of things, do you notice a trend here? Yeah, we eat too much, but nah, sexual sin's not bad. I'll eat too much, but I would never tell you a lie. Come on, most people have told more lies before you leave the house, before you get to work. You know, I mean, it's, it's part of the nature of who we are. These are the most common things. Yet, I want you to notice something. We are less likely to tell our real, intimate, deep struggles and temptation. We are less likely to share this with people because of shame, guilt, uh, the worry about what people will think, what will people say, what will people's reception of me be. What happens is, is we take the real issues of our life and we put these down here and then we elevate everything else above it to pretend like we don't have a struggle in our life. The truth is, they say realistically, at least 50% of men sitting in this room this morning struggle with the temptation of pornography. I'm not saying you're, you're looking at pornography or that's, that's what you're doing. I'm saying that they say realistically any group of men in a room, 50% at least being uh, very conservative, would be tempted or struggle with the thought of pornography. Another one of these uh, kind of a pivotal change in the studies more recent is because technology is growing so much, technology is becoming one of the greatest temptations that people struggle with. And because of t technology becoming a greater struggle in t uh, temptation, all of these other things come with it. 
shopping, spending money. You can do it online and not even feel bad about going to the store. You can just get online, punch a button, and it doesn't feel quite so bad until the bill comes, you know? Pornography, you have to almost close your eyes just to navigate the Internet to get away from it. It's not something you really have to go looking for. But what this study showed was more than just, hey, we struggle with this, is how much we're unwilling to share what our real struggles are. Every person in this room, we have a temptation. Listen to this. This was a quote that I wrote down by one of the men who performed this study, and I thought this was important. He said this. He said, all temptations start with a desire for something good. And I thought, well, that's very true. Most all temptations start with a desire that is something good. He said something like tasty, like food or, or rest or we want intimacy. But they become disordered when they enslave us and they spread pain through our lives. And what this person is saying is, hey, man, I'm, I'm hungry. I want some dinner. What do you think? Well, we could go anywhere. We could go get a salad. You know, we go get something, you know, at a nice proportion. I don't like to go to restaurants where they give you proportioned meals. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to. I always ask this question to the waitress. I, uh, we ate at, uh, what was it we ate at? Um, the burger place, Steak and Shake, a few weeks ago. And when the waitress come to me, I said, ma'am, I said, what do you have on this menu that will make me sick? <laughs> That's what I said. That determined. She said, well, we've got this burger called the, the, the seven-layer burger or something like that. It was seven patties with seven pieces of cheese. And I said, yes, ma'am, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Now, I could have gotten a normal meal that was proportioned, but I want to go all out. I mean, I was hungry. I wanted something big, and it was big, and it was delicious, you know? It started as just this normal desire for food, but my mind and my desires, my wants, they kicked in, and I said, I don't want a burger. You put that inside. Tell me what's going to make me sick. She said, we're going to put seven burgers together and put it between two buns. I said, yes, ma'am, that's what I want. And I paid for it, church. You pay for it when it's over. I don't recommend it. You will pay for it. And that's what temptation does to us. We start with something that's good. And then before we know it, our desires, our selfishness, our flesh, our stuff gets in the way. We magnify it to something that becomes unhealthy and causes damage in our life. So it's important to overcome temptation, first of all, knowing what it is that tempts you. And every person in this room, your personality is different, your thought processes are different, your desires are different, so you need to identify what is it that tempts you. Number two, write this one down. This is important. When does it tempt me? So what is it that tempts me, and then when am I tempted? When does it tempt me? The Bible says this, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Spirit's willing. The spirit wants to do what's right, but it's this old flesh that's weak. So you got to know what it is that tempts you and then when is it that it's tempting you? There's an old saying that says, if you go to the barber shop enough, you'll eventually get a haircut. <laughs> you know, you don't go to the barbershop just to hang around and talk. Eventually, someone's going to cut your hair. They're going to talk you into something. If you go there enough, eventually it's going to happen. You don't go to the bar just to eat the peanuts. You know what I'm talking about? You don't go to the bar and say, give me a bag of those peanuts. No, you go to the bar long enough, you end up with a drink. You don't go shopping just to look. Come on now. It was on sale. I couldn't. I saved money by buying it. You know how you ever walked out and said, they give you those receipts, you saved $200 today. I had to spend $300 to save it. But listen, we saved $200. You didn't save it, you spent $300. You don't go to the store and go, I don't know how I'm, where's all my money going? You know, you go to the store, you're going to spend money. When you put yourself in these situations, right in the middle of it, if it's your temptation, you don't do it. If you find yourself struggling with certain things, you just don't go there. Don't let it be a part of your life. It says, keep watch and pray so that you won't go, give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Keep watch. Be on the lookout for the things in your life that will get you every time. If lust is your, is your problem, don't go to the magazine rack. 
Don't go to book. You ever been to Books a Million recently and go to the, I mean, come on, you can't take kids in there. You have to come on, get behind, come on, get clothes, cover your eyes. I mean, it's just normal magazines. Listen, most of us, come on, you don't, you don't get the magazines for the articles. Okay, you ever heard somebody say that? Well, I just really like the articles. You're not reading any articles in that magazine, okay? <laughs> Trust me, you're not reading any articles in that magazine. Where is the car? Come on, you, you know what I'm talking about. There's no car in that picture. You can't find a car. You've got to guard yourself. You can't put yourself in the middle of it. Listen, if TV is a problem, don't watch TV alone. If the Internet is a problem, don't be on the computer alone. Don't let things in your home. You know, I've always in, enjoyed uh, stories of Billy Graham, and, and most everyone knows who Billy Graham is. And, you know, it's amazing that a man lived that type of life in front of lots of people, um, you know, being an example of, of, of a man of God, living for, for God, giving his life for him. And, you know, they said that every time he would travel, any hotel room that he would go to, First of all, they said he never traveled alone. And secondly, they said he would ask for televisions to be removed from his hotel rooms. He said if he was going to be somewhere and there would be no one in his room or if he had a private room to himself, he would ask that the television be removed. Was it a temptation of his? I don't know. Maybe so. Maybe he never wanted to find out, so he removed it anyway. What I'm saying is don't put yourself in a circumstance if you know the temptation is there. Just remove it. There are certain people maybe that you don't need to be around, certain places you don't need to go, certain things you don't need to watch, certain music you don't need to listen to. Listen, you can think of, you can be in a place, you can smell a familiar smell, and it will take you back to a moment in time. It can take you back to a place. You can see something that will take your mind back to places. And when your mind begins to move and your emotions begin to get tied to it, it will take you to somewhere that you never intended to go because temptation will kick in. You have to be aware of your own individual temptations because if you're not, no one else will. No one knows you like you know yourself. And you can only be as strong, you can only have as much integrity and character as you want to have in yourself because you're the only one that can get yourself there. You know what I'm saying? You've got to remove yourself from temptation. And then number three, ask yourself this question, and this was a big one. Who tempts me? Who is it that tempts me? What is it? Number one, what? And then when? And number three, who? Who are you hanging around that you do not need to hang around? The Bible says this, and this is a very important verse of Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. I've heard parents say this a lot, and I can remember being told this growing up. They said, they said who have you been hanging around? I, can come, I could come home from school, and they say, who have you been hanging around? You don't talk that way in this house. You don't act that way. They may have an attitude like that across the street, but you don't have an attitude like that in this house. And then when my parents find out who those friends are, then they start calling those people by name. I can walk in, and they say, you've been hanging out with so-and-so. You don't go over there anymore. You don't hang out with them. But mom, you know, you know how you do. Some of you mothers, this is your day. But mom... <laughs> You go through all this and it's recognizable because who you hang around affects who you are. You'll, you get in certain groups of people and you'll talk different. My brother can call me on the phone and I can answer the phone and my wife will go, that's your brother, isn't it? She said, you don't talk to anyone else like that the way you talk to your brother. She said, you sound completely different when you talk to your brother on the phone. It's just true. You will change depending on who you hang around. And you know what, church? That's one of the worst things to really have to deal with with temptation because that's relational. Because when you have relationships with people, whether they're, they're good relationships, they're positive or they're negative, it's still a relationship. And when you have a connection to people, when you have this bond, when you have this, this relationship that's based on hanging out after work, at the bar drinking or hanging around and, and, and talking uh, about everybody and everything or getting everyone together and going spending money that we don't have just to do things that we don't need to be doing. All of this stuff, when you involve people, we are made to be relational. We are made to do life not on our own but with other people. And when you surround yourself, if it's bad, it will drag you down. 
every single time. You can't mismanage relationships. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. It means you can't hang out with someone who's going to pull you down and think that you're going to be okay. Because over time, you will lose the battle. So what is it that tempts us? When does it happen? And who is it in our life that's a part of the temptation, that's dragging us down? So those are three important questions. If we asked ourselves today, I imagine that we would all have a different answer of what it is. So I want you to flip your outline over, and I want to give you three things to overcoming temptation in our life. And these are simple, but I think they're, they're important. I think it's the first three steps that you could ever take to get yourself out of temptation. Number one is this. You need to run to Jesus. You need to run to Jesus. And I know that's like, you know, church talk, but that's the truth. Okay? That's the truth. Nothing on your own can ever be accomplished because you can't do it. You're not good enough. You can't ever uh, outperform the devil. The devil has been around a lot longer than we have. The devil has been around long enough to know what it is to get each and every one of us. You need to run to Jesus first. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this. The temptation in your life are no different from what others experience. So take a little rest in that. The temptations in your life are no different than what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you're tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. So I I hate to do this to us this morning, but I'm going to take away one of our excuses. I couldn't help myself. Well, you couldn't, but God could. That's just the truth. I can't help myself. But if I'm relying on God and I'm in, in, in with all sincerity truly asking God to help rescue me from my stuff, God will provide a way out. The Bible says it. So you can't just say, well, I couldn't help myself, or I just gave in, or I just fell to temptation. Well, we will. But the Bible says God is faithful, and he will always prepare a way out. Running to Jesus is the very first step. Pastor Rick Warren says this. This is incredible. Before you can say no to the devil, you have to learn to say yes to Jesus. Now, that's good. Until you can learn to say no to the devil, you got to learn to say yes to Jesus. So until you say yes to Jesus, you'll never say no to the devil. Every time we need to run to Jesus. He will prepare a way out. It's incredible. There's nothing in your life, the Bible tells us, that Jesus hasn't already experienced himself. There's no temptation known to man that Jesus himself walking this earth did not encounter. The difference is he didn't let temptation overtake him. He, but now most people think, well, he was, he was, he's the son of God. And, and with that, you know, if I was Jesus, I could do that too. But how many times do you read where the Bible says Jesus went alone to pray? Jesus got away very early in the morning. He went and spent time with God. Listen, that didn't just happen. It wasn't just that he wasn't tempted. It was, he was tempted just like you and I, except he spent enough time seeking and praying and watching and going to God that God rescued him every single time. And just what God has done for Jesus, so God can also do for you or for me. God is a faithful God, and he will prepare a way out of any one of your temptations. So this morning, whatever it is, whatever your struggle, whatever your temptation, whatever the stronghold, I want you to know, you've asked yourself this question, what am I ever going to do? How will I ever overcome it? How will I ever get out of this? God is your way out. Jesus is the way out. And it's not just a prayer, it's a lifestyle. It's every day waking up saying, God, today, I need you today to give me the grace to make it through. And number two, here's another one. First, you run to Jesus, and then you run from temptation. It's this constant theme of running here. Don't hang around temptation. I love this. This is a story out of Genesis 39 and 12. It says this, She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. The story of Joseph, and uh, if you've never heard the story, Joseph at this point in time, he's, he's living in this palace. He's like, he's like the big man to, to, the, to the rich man. He's taking care of the home, and he's looking after everything. Well, this, this, uh, uh, you know, this man looks at Joseph and says, Hey, I trust you to be in my home so you, you can just take care of all of my servants and everything, but... But this man's wife had taken a liking to Joseph too. And she says, hey, 
No one's here. Come to bed with me. She grabs him by his cloak, and he just left it in her hands. He said, I'm gone. I may run out of here naked, but I'm not staying in this room. Now, why there was nothing under the cloak, I don't know. I don't know what Joseph's... <laughs> I don't know what those habits, I don't know why there wasn't a little more to that, but all I know is he left it in her hand. He said, I will make a fool of myself leaving this place for all the world to see, but I will not remain back there and fall into temptation. It probably wasn't because, you know, it, it, it wasn't appealing to him. Probably wasn't that she wasn't an attractive lady. It was She was a lady of power, and, and she was probably a desired lady. Come on, let's be honest, real, real world, real talk. But Joseph said, if I stay here one more second, I may do something I will regret later. So I am out of here. You need to learn to run and leave it behind. Don't hang around. Listen, if temptation calls you on the phone, don't argue. You hang up. You just hang up. Treat it like a telemarketer. Come on, I used to do telemarketing. I know how you guys act when telemarketers call. <laughs> I talked to some, I could see your names. I haven't told some of you, but I'm still praying for you, okay? <laughs> Call and ask you to help an officer, and you talk to me that way. That's what you need to do with temptation. <laughs> Don't entertain it. That phone rings, and you say, I'm eating dinner. I've worked all day. I don't have time to talk to you. Don't call my house again. Bam. But temptation calls, and we say, well, I probably shouldn't. Not today. Uh, maybe, maybe next week. Well, what would happen if I did? But if we treated temptation the way that we treat those telemarketers and just hang up, don't entertain it, don't think about it, don't sit around and have a conversation with it, don't look at it, don't think one just won't hurt or this will just be okay today, you just run. You leave it behind. Learn to run. Set some boundaries in your life. Listen, every time you run, you teach your body to comply. You teach your mind to comply. It's like, it's like training yourself in, in any form of uh, physical activity or, or, or you know, a, a runner who, who learns to run. I've, I've been learning to run recently and uh, ran a mile. I mean, I was proud. I mean, you thought I'd run a marathon. I mean, I just wanted to shout it. I mean, this is a big deal. Now, we have a man in our church that ran 40 miles last week. And I kid you not, he ran 40 miles last week in a marathon and was at church on Sunday morning. He couldn't walk straight. His feet, he had his feet propped up in his lap, rubbing his feet. The whole, I mean, I know it's kind of grossing you out, but the man had run 40 miles. Come on, cut him a break. And he was still at church. He said, I got up this morning, and I could still walk, so I thought, I might as well be in church. He said, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow, but I might as well be in church today. And here I am out there. I'm, I'm thinking, Phew all right, I'm going to run a mile today. And I'm all suited up, geared up, like this is a big deal, like I'm missing to do a marathon. <laughs> and as I got to the end of that, end of that road, and I knew where the marker was. And my, my app was going to say, 1.3 miles, average 12 minutes. I and mean, I was waiting on her to start talking to me, you know, in that app. I told myself, I said, you will finish. You will run. <laughs> run, Brandon, run. <laughs> You're almost there. You have to at least be able to say you ran a mile. Run. But you know what? It got a little easier. Every time, it's just getting a little easier. And I've noticed that I, 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 don't, I don't fall over in heaves quite as often as I did the first time that I ran. I'm training myself to do it. And I will be able to do it before the end of this, uh, this summer's over. I will be able to do it because I'm going to train myself to do it. And when it comes to temptation, you will be able to overcome it because you're going to train yourself to overcome it. You're going to condition yourself to run and run from it. Regardless of what you leave behind, run. Put some, put some things in your life, some blocks. Put some things that are, will help you in your life, and that brings me to number three, this will help you, is you need to run with others. You need to run with others. You need to run to Jesus. You need to run from temptation, but you need to be running with others because it's with others that will help safeguard you the entire way. Confess your sins to each other. That's difficult. Come on, church. Let's, let's, I know it's what the Bible says, but let's digest this like real people this morning. Confess your sins to each other. We don't do that. Let me be honest with us this morning. We don't do that. And that's what's wrong with all of us. 
And I'm not talking about just us in this room. I'm talking about as, as believers in the worldwide church in, in, in Jesus' name, we don't do this. That's why when we're asked, what's your greatest temptation, we all say we eat too much. When really our greatest temptation is, is we're dealing with, with, with physical issues because of our own sin, of, of addictions and, and all the heartache that it's caused. And we're dealing with pornography issues. And we've got all these really strong holes in our life, but we're talking like we're, we're eating too much. When We're not being honest. The Bible says confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that we can all know your business and talk about you. No, but that's what we think. But the Bible says pray for each other so that you may be healed. It doesn't say to go to Jesus so that you may be healed. The Bible says go to Jesus so that you can be forgiven. Because it is a it is a eternity issue. You go to Jesus for forgiveness, but you go to each other for healing because we run together. That's why small groups at Cultivate Church is something of importance. And every person, 100% of us in this room, needs to be connected to a small group. I don't care what it is. I don't care where it is. I don't care if it's a knitting small group. Get you some knitting needles and knit you a blanket together, okay? You need to be connected to people because this is why. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. You need to be running with people. It's a safeguard in your life. My refrigerator at my house, we just moved, and uh, our, we don't, our refrigerators in the past, the, the, the refrigerator that I own that's in a, a, another place, I got out of an abandoned house, okay? So I was proud of it. I brought it home, cleaned it up. You know, I, I rescued it, rescued it, rescued it <laughs> from an abandoned house. My excitement got the best of me. But this refrigerator in this house where we are now, it's, it's really cool. You can actually lock the refrigerator so that you can't open it. You can put a code on it so that you can't get yourself into the refrigerator. So if, if food is a problem, you lock it. The refrigerator will beep when you've left the door open too long. I'm a stickler at my house about you cut out a light if you're not using it. My wife will have left a room 10 minutes ago. I'll say, sweetheart, you threw in here? I'll go ahead and kill that light for you if you want me to. You would hate to live with me over that. The refrigerator, I can hear it in there, beep, 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 beep. Sweetheart, you know what that means? It means close the door. <laughs> you've been in the refrigerator too long. Down to my refrigerator has its own safeguards so that you can't get yourself into it. If a refrigerator could do that, why don't I have safeguards in my life for the important things? Have people in your life. The Bible says, Psalms 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Run with each other. Do life together. You'll never overcome until you do life together. Temptation is common to us all. We all deal with it. There's a what, there's a when, there's a who. But we need to run to Jesus. We need to run from temptation. And we need to run with others this morning. I want to pray just a prayer blessing over us today. I want to ask God to help us to do that. To help us this morning to literally overcome temptation in our life. And listen, church, it'll start small. It really will. It'll start as one mile and then maybe build up to two or to three. It'll start just as one decision, one yes or one no. It'll start small every day until it builds into something that becomes a normal, natural part of our life. And I want to pray this morning that God would do that for us, that God would begin to help us to overcome, to resist the temptation that's in our life. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray that prayer for all of us. And if that's in your heart today and you, you've been struggling and you have that struggle and you already know what it is, You've taken inventory this morning. I want you just to ask God to help you with that as well. But before we go there, the first thing we have to do is run to Jesus. And maybe you're in this room this morning watching by the Internet, and you've never ran to Jesus. You've never given Jesus your life. And today you would like to do that. I want to pray for you and give you an opportunity to give your heart to Him. Last week, six people said yes to Jesus. Just last week, six people made the greatest decision they could ever make. And maybe you're here today and you want to join those people. 
just by saying, God, I want to give you my life. And if that's you, if you're comfortable and you want to raise your hand, let me know that you're making that decision. Say, hey, Brandon, will you pray for me this morning? I just want you to raise it so I can see it. Nobody's going to get you or embarrass you. But more importantly than that, that Connect card Pastor Brandon talked about this morning, I would love for you to mark it on that Connect card that today you're making a decision for God to give your life to Jesus because it's the greatest decision you can make and we would love to send you some information on how to take your next steps. We would love to pray for you this week. So right now, God, we're so thankful that today, God, you do give us a way out. God, temptation is overwhelming. We do struggle, God. Every one of us in this room, we, we've got those weak areas where we know that we're missing. And God, we just ask you today, first and foremost, just to forgive us of our sins. For every person in this auditorium or online that doesn't have that relationship with Jesus, today, God, we're asking, forgive us of our sins. Come live in our lives. Be our Lord and our Savior. God, we place you first. Jesus, you are number one in our life. We're going to live it for you. We're going to give you our best. We're going to commit to you. And we thank you that you love us enough to forgive us and to help us to overcome. And God, for all of us, we ask you to do that for us. This week, help us to overcome. Help us to run to you every time temptation comes so that temptation is left behind as we run to you we run away from that temptation and God provide people in our lives that we can run with we need each other God we need to overcome we need people to support us and God I thank you that you're providing that place for us right here at Cultivate Church God thank you for performing miracles in our life we love you and God we celebrate your goodness in Jesus name amen come on church can we celebrate a good God this morning amen.